Hey there, I'm JJ, and today we're gonna to talk all about parameters, how to use parameters inside of Data Studio. I have two examples, uh, one that is extremely practical, one that is uh, practical to the right scenario. Um, so we're just gonna hop right into it, and if you have not yet, download this cheat sheet, it's super valuable, and you get to join my awesome semi-weekly newsletter where I write all these awesome tips and tricks on how to use Data Studio to simplify, create better, all that jazz. So let's hop into it. So First off, let's just talk about parameters. Where do you find them? Where are they, et cetera? So parameters live at the data source level. So when you're inside of Data Studio, if you go over to the far right, you can see here all of the different um, uh, data sources that we have. And then if you click on a specific, uh, for example, a metric on a page, you can then look, click and find the specific uh, data source for that field. Then here you'll see add a field, right? You're familiar with that, we've talked about that before, but now we're looking at add a parameter. So I'm gonna click on this parameter right now, and what we're gonna look at is all the different aspects that we have. So first off is the few things that we do have are the to name the parameter with an ID. So if I type in here, we're gonna call it like mul, uh, super or future projection is what I'm gonna call this. Uh, maybe let's add in multiplier. Then what we can do is it gives it an ID. We can rename that ID if we'd like to, right? Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't wanna do it, it doesn't matter. Um, then you can choose the option of text, which would be like a string of information. So like, um, yeah, just text in general, like super cool thing we'll talk about next. We have whole numbers, decimals, and then Booleans. Booleans are a true or false value if you did not know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use a number decimal. We can actually set a range. So we can set a range here of a minimum of one and a maximum of 50, right? And then we can set a default value, which is actually required. Um, on all of them, I believe it's required, um, but it only gives you an error um, on the range here. So we're, just to recap, we're looking at the uh, parameters name of the future uh, projection. We then have the number, we then have the uh, permitted values of the, within this range. So it can be like any number of 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2. Um, and then right up here, you can see that we have the uh, the default value of one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create this parameter. And just to recap what a parameter actually does is it is a input field that we have access to. So um, I'm gonna hit save on that and then we're gonna hit done. And so what we can actually do here is we can create now a control and create a slider using that. So here I'm just gonna put in, what did I call it? The future projection multiplier. And now we've got a beautiful projection multiplier piece here. Now you're like, what on earth does that do? And we're hopping into that right now. So this is a number, right? We talked about this already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create this as a future projection. So I just created another duplicate of this and we're gonna make this a different color so that it is easily identifiable. That is not the same thing. Let's go with a, I don't know, let's go with purple, you know? And we're gonna say that, hey, um, our growth projection. And here we have new users, right? And we, which is the same field, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new field here. And so I'm gonna come in here and create a field and we're just gonna do new users multiplied by the future projection multiplier. Then we're gonna hit save and we're gonna call this uh, uh, new user forecast. All right, and we're hit save. And then we're gonna do the same thing for total revenue, right? So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna go to total revenue, create a new field, it's gonna be total revenue, and we're gonna multiply that by our future projection multiplier. So now we're gonna call this total revenue forecast, and we're gonna hit apply. So now what we can do is we can look at this, and now if we go to view mode, it's gonna be nice and pretty. And we can then change and say, what if we what if we next month we did 5x, right? So now this growth projector is actually multiplying by this input value. So if we as we scale this up, right, 
uh, um, and down is actually multiplying those numbers together. Super handy for if you're trying to say, hey, what would happen if we doubled our um, inputs, right? So now you can take this and de default it to zero. And by default, it will load up like this. And then what we can actually do is say, hey, let's multiply it by six, right? So that is the first use case of creating a number um, here. And because it is a slide value, so let's go back into this future, um, future projection multiplier. Um, because it's that and it's um, a range, right? What we can actually do then is we can actually change this um, to a any value, right? And if I hit done, the default is one. If I hit done, I know you hit, oh, you have to save it first. Make sure you save everything. We hit done. Now this won't be a range because there's no range to select from. So now what we'd have to use is an input value. Just an, I can use an input box right here. And we'll change this to our future projection multiplier. And so here, what we can do is now, if we come up in here view mode, we can change this to one, hit enter. We can change it to whatever our little hearts desires. Hit five, now we have that there. And we can put in five, or say we just wanna do 1.2, bada bing, bada boom. So now we have an idea of what that actually like looks like at a 1.2 growth. We'd have to hit 28,000 new users next month, right? Looking at that, and then we can also adjust this month to be, a, for example, say we want to look at the last 30 days, right? So that we could change this, another idea here, is last 30 days and next 30 days. And then you can even put at, and then what we can do is put at, and then grab our actual future projection multiplier and create a new field. So this is actually, again, pro tip, we can actually add a scorecard in here, put in our future, oh, it makes it might make sure you wanna do it here. Oh, I guess it doesn't wanna let us do that. Sometimes it lets us do it, sometimes it doesn't, so. Do this, I just did this before, so we'll see if it works. Well, never mind. So I guess we won't be able to do that here, but sometimes you're able to actually put the actual value of that, um, of the actual parameter here, and you're good to go. All right, example number two. This is gonna be where we look at the text fields. So what we're gonna do is create a simple table right here. And what I'm gonna do is use the full page URL which is the GA4's version of the page, right? So it's gonna have the full page URL of every individual page. And what we're gonna do is add views in next to it. So now we just have the number of views and then also the page URL that they were on to view that page. So by default, if I click on this little URL, so say we go to the Google Merchandise Store, it will then open up in a new page of the Google Merchandise Store. Cool, not that, not that handy. But what if we wanted to create a um, parameters to add to the end of this. So what we could actually do is come in here, go into our good old data source, right? We wanna make sure we open up the right one. We're gonna add a new parameter here and we're gonna call it, I keep it a text field, and we're gonna give it a parameter name of test UTMs. All right, if you're not familiar with UTMs, do not worry, this applies to just about anything. So we're gonna keep it as a text value and I'm just gonna type in here, question mark source, sorry, question mark UTM underscore source equals test and UTM underscore medium equals test and UTM underscore campaign equals test. So the default values of this, um, string are tests, right? Basically we're just creating some test UTMs. So now I'm gonna hit save on that. So it's called test UTMs. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new field here. And we're gonna create a new field. We're gonna say it's a hyperlink. And we're gonna concatenate, which is uh, combining two things together, the full page URL and our test UTMs. And then what we're gonna do is say, click me to view this page. All right, so now um, preview, and I forgot to put a comma, and I think we are good to go, boom. So now 
what we're looking at here is if I click on this URL, you'll see at the very bottom of the page, all right, right underneath my head, so right down there. If you hover over this, you will see that it says we're going to www.googlemerchandisestore.com. But if we're hovering over this one, we are looking at merchandisestore.com, question mark, UTM source, medium, etc. So what you're able to do is create a method of always being able to test add those test parameters or any parameter you'd like to, to the um, actual URLs. Then leveling this up, I hope for your, hopefully you're staying with me on this. I know it. Uh, we're going fast, but I like to go fast and speak fast. So we have this uh, page right here. We can hit this uh, to open it up and it will open up with those UTMs attached. And then what we can actually do is we can do the same exact concept where if we wanted to, let's just say we come in here and um, wanted to put an input box, right? And then we want to change this to our test UTMs is what we could actually do here is create a UTM creator. So now what we're actually doing is that if you wanted to say add UTMs to a bunch of your most popular URLs, you can come in here and say campaign equals widget one, our medium equals, uh, I don't know, network and the source is from i don't know um affiliate world right so now what you can see is that if i look at this and we are hovering over this page at the very bottom what you can see is that we are now appending those utms to this url super handy for use case um, you can use this for a but bunch a plethora of different options. Um, and hopefully that makes a lot of sense. All right, that's it. Two use cases, one using numbers, one using text fields. And if you have any other comments or ideas for how to use this in the future, drop them in the comments down below. I will see you guys in the next video.